Welcome back everybody. So we're back at the farm here and we have the engine hanging by the forklift draining oil at the moment. The reason we have it back at the farm is it is too windy and loud in my building and secondly it's going to need to be here anyway once we start pulling sleeves because I'm going to need to design a tool and machine it on the lathe, which the lathe is here as well. One final reason, it's finally light enough to come here without the flywheel on there, without all the accessories, without the head. I was actually able to pick it up with the engine hoist, get it in the bag of the pickup, and haul it here. With the oil draining, I took the time to clean out what I could of that mouse nest. Sprayed everything down with brake clean to keep anything from going airborne. Or mask just to keep any sort of protection from asbestos down in here or even mice droppings that carry the hantavirus. It's not good. But with all that done, I think we can go after these fold over locks. You know, I did find a timing pointer in there. You couldn't see that before, it was so buried. And. Out here, I noticed, which I haven't noticed before, Squatch would recognize that as the oiler for your starting pinion. I do have a question for Squatch as to what this lever is made out of, because they welded it at one time. I don't know if that is a bronze lever. It's kind of what it looks like up here. With all the fold-over locks taken care of, if you look down here, there are four bolts that come from the oil pan into this bell housing, and they are right there. Now, I already went and made sure that those will come out. I was kind of worried, being that they've been sitting in here, the end would have gotten rusty and they didn't want to back out. But all those are loose, so I'll pull those four out, and then we will come in here and take all of those bolts out. And then we should be able to pull this entire flywheel housing out of here. So as usual, I went around, broke them all loose just with a breaker bar and a 15-16 socket. So now we'll switch over to the impact and take them the rest of the way out. Looking at these bolts. They almost look like they had an oil on them of some sort. Actually look really good considering the environment they were in. And with all the bolts out of there, I can see we're sitting on a dowel here. It looks like another dowel there. What I'm going to do now is get the oil bucket out of the way, bring this down. We're probably about a foot and a half off the ground. We'll bring it down so the bell housing's just above the ground, and then we'll get a mallet on the other side and get it off them dowels. For those of you wondering, oil actually looked really good. Just a very small trickle of water came out, and then it was, I mean, it's thick but it's, it's still oil yet, unlike the rear end.
and we found the water that has been living in that pinion under the starting motor. Hopefully it didn't freeze and crack anything. A lot of these parts that do carry coolant, I'm going to send them off to the machine shop. Just have them magnaflux them. I would hate to get something all cleaned up, painted, and then find out after everything's back together that it leaks. I know this tractor had freeze damage, so just to prevent any of those situations, I'm going to spend the money, have a magnaflux it, make sure it's good, because that water there obviously was frozen this last winter. Here we are at the back of the engine, the bell housing gone. I bet that restricted coolant just a little bit. If we look at this corresponding piece on the bell housing. It's another reason I'm gonna have these blocks, or even, you know, the flywheel housing, I'm just gonna have it cleaned by the machine shop. They have a, I don't know if it's an acidic based or what it is, but uh, it's a really good cleaner. It can, you know, it'll strip all this stuff out of there, give us a good foundation to start with. I was surprised we actually pulled that dowel out. That dowel stayed. That one came with, I should say, that one. So next on the list, if you look, these bolts that hold these spring holders, they actually go through both the block and the oil pan. So in order to get the oil pan off, these will either have to come with the oil pan or come out completely. I think we're just going to take them out completely. Well, it laughed at me, so I threw heat at it. At least it's turning now. Alright guys, so I spent probably the last 45 minutes just trying to get this one bolt and nut out. And finally... I just ended up cutting the nut. I tried heating it several times and it had galled. So it ended up getting split in half. I was able to save this part of it, but if you look, it's not straight. It's got a little bow in it. So I'm not sure what to think of that. I don't foresee how I could have done that because it basically came straight down out of the bore once I had the nut off. It would probably be okay, but I don't know. We'll have to kind of dig into that one maybe a little later on. There's a better look at them that are worn out they had almost I can get it lined up here with one hand they had almost worn all the way through the flat bar and they made just one nasty groove in that pin almost wore all the way through the pin so I have another side to do hopefully I don't fight this one as hard as this side and then we will be pulling an oil pan off. On the other side, it was an inch and five sixteenths nut. Now this is an inch and a quarter on this side. I don't know why the discrepancy between the two different sizes. I brought the inch and five sixteenths over here and it was way loose. So I figured I'd try the inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter fits was nice. But what I've been doing to just get them broke loose was just hitting it with a hammer and came over to this side after I sprayed just a little bit of lubricant in there since some threads are rusty. 
I don't get it. I fought and fought and fought the other side. And it's like someone's had this side apart recently. I mean, I cannot explain this. I'll take it, though. After fighting the other side, I'll definitely take it. This is, this is a lot easier. And this one's straight, so I'm not sure if this one was replaced. I saved you guys from watching me take out all the oil pan bolts. There's like 22 or something like that, 3 8 bolts that run the perimeter. So, technically, nothing is holding the oil pan on except the gasket right now. There is some dowels in there that we do have to try and get it off from. So I gotta find a good place to pry in here and see if we can get that to pop loose. guys well I know you guys kind of see some sparkling, like looks like dust particles. What that is, is that's actually the light on the camera reflecting as particles go by. I've seen it many times in the past videos, just never really addressed it. But it's the best way to get a light with the camera so I can see, or so you guys can see what's going on. I can see what's going on, but just try to give you the best illuminated view because otherwise if we turn that light off that's what you end up with not horrible but you can see a little better with the light so guys I think that's gonna wrap this one up hopefully we'll be able to get back to this here right away and get that crank pulled out of there I really really want to see what the crank itself looks like to know if we're gonna have to have this one cut or use that one that I got from Squatch also I need to get this block off to the machine shop racing seasons right around the corner which means they are going to be busy so this needs to get out of here disassembled and out of here the chassis needs to get disassembled yet and off to sandblasting I got a lot of work to do guys so I appreciate everyone who's sticking around, following along. We'll keep going at it. We'll see you next time. So in the last video I had someone ask who the other two dogs were. 
So this is Bentley. He is a Black Lab Great Dane mix. That's why he is so tall. He is nine years old now. And this is what he does all day. He He's pretty lazy. And the other one here. This is my five-year-old husky, Cash. He's kind of a prick. Very stubborn. But I still love him. Should we go home? You want to go home? Should we go? Let's go.